Hi everyone, in this video we will see API in Business Central that is connecting how to use or how to connect Business Central APIs and web services in Postman. So before uh, going into the demo, so I wanted to tell you what are the key terminologies we will be using it throughout. Okay, that is we should know what is API. Why do we need API? What is a postman tool? We will be discussing about OAuth. So what is OAuth and why do we need that OAuth? Okay. So the first thing which we should understand is what API. So API means application programming interface. So probably we everyone should have known this particular thing that is API means uh, application programming interface. So it is a set of protocol, routine and tools for building software and application. This is a generic terminology. Okay. So what exactly the API is with an example I just wanted to tell. So API is like a middleman. Okay understand that api this is api okay so it will helps different software system talk to each other okay so uh, imagine like imagine that you are trying to order a food at a restaurant okay you are trying to you are the client and you are trying to order a food in the restaurant so you don't want to go into the um, kitchen right or you don't want to cook by yourself and you also don't want to go straight to the chef and uh, place an order with them directly. So there will be a chef, there will be uh, someone who is cooking for you, right? So this is a restaurant. So you are the customer, okay? So whatever the order you have, you don't want to go directly to the chef and order it, okay? So what you will be doing is what? we will talk to the waiter okay we will talk to the waiter so that is what the middleman and give the order we will be ordering whatever i want i'll be ordering to the waiter so the waiter takes your order to the kitchen okay he will take your order to the kitchen and the chef uses their expertise to prepare the ordered food for you so whatever you have ordered so he will be preparing for you so whenever a software system want to exchange information or request something okay so imagine that the software a software system is what the customer okay if it wants to exchange information or request a certain action the software will use an api okay it will use an api to facilitate that communication so one system sends a request through the api and the api then takes care of communicating that request to the other system so this api will take the communication to the other system okay and which performs the requested action and sends a response back to the api so once it is once the order is uh, cooked what it will do it will send the cooked item back to the waiter and the waiter will be uh, delivering that to us right likewise once the uh, product is cooked it will be sent to the api and it will be it will come back to us okay so why do we need all these why i should not directly contact to the uh, chef because no it will create a chaos uh, there might be a, a, a security issue so there are a lot of things which may happen so that is why we need a middleman to communicate okay so you can relate this with many we are using many examples in our daily life for example a weather application in our mobile phone we use this at weather api why i'm using a weather api because you know uh, if you are accessing through your mobile phone then the mobile phone has to send the request and you will be receiving uh, the information according to your mobile device setting everything if you are accessing through a tab then it will be uh, uh, it will be based on that settings so api will retrieve current weather information from uh, a source such as open weather map or a weather and it will give you the information back okay so every in in any of the app you will be using a api in almost all the apps you will be using api okay i hope you understand the concept of uh, what is api right so that is what it is like a middleman okay so if if we just proceed with let us understand what is a postman tool so why do we need a postman tool if you know that 
then no problem if you don't know please understand a postman is a powerful and flexible tool for testing and managing api so why should i test i want to see whether whatever the api which i have created is properly sending the request and getting the request back from the main application right so for that i need some testing tool okay so it allow developers and tester to easily send http request such as get post put and delete so if you want to know more about the http request please leave your message in the comment i will explain all the requests in very clear uh, in a separate video very clearly in a separate video okay and view the response from the api all from within user friendly inf interface so you will be understanding whether your api is really working out or not okay in that particular so postman you we can create the uh, create collections of api request set up an environment variable to reuse across requests okay so postman is what a tool which is widely used in software development industry and it is particularly popular for its simplicity and ease of use so i'll also show you how to download and install postman tool and we should also understand what is OAuth. So OAuth is an open authorization, is an open standard for authorization that provides a way for user to grant third party application access to their resource. So open authentication. Uh, previously in Business Central, we we might you might have used web services okay but now it is web access key through a web access key but now it is totally deprecated we will be using this OAuth okay so uh, this oauth like uh, uh, it is widely used as a secured authorization protocol for web based application and it is supported by many popular web services like uh, facebook microsoft twitter so they are using oauth only okay so we can easily share the data and resources with third party applications while maintaining the control over the credentials that is the purpose of OAuth, okay? Open, O for open, A for authorization, A-U-T-H for authorization. And why do we need OAuth? Because it is very user friendly and it grants third party application access to their resource without having to share the login credentials. Apart from that, we have various uh, uh, ap applications for that. That is a security, okay? It is more secured. Uh, and because it eliminates the login credential so you don't want to s store the login credential user experience is very good okay and uh, there are some more in, uh, um, uh, additional advantages on OAuth that i'll be sharing it in my blog okay so now let us directly go to how we can uh, we can use this uh, api how we can establish this oauth and uh, how we can connect in the business central application so we are going to see that okay so for that uh, we will first open the Azure portal. You have to go to the Azure portal. So ensure that whatever the mail ID you are using it in your business central, your Azure portal, you should also open your Azure portal in the same business central. Okay. Sorry, uh, same mail ID. Okay. So you have to open this. And then now in the uh, under that, you can see an app registration. You have to register your business central app okay so either you can click here if it is not available you can go and check here app registration so it will uh, it will show up the app registration here so once if you click that okay you can see that there is a, a, a thing called new registration okay you have to click here new registration so click the new registration it will ask you for the name the user facing display name so this is the display name so give the proper display name for that i am going to give gms gomati or gms o auth test demo okay so gms o auth test demo and you have to uh, for myself i am going to give, use a single tenant okay so i'm going to use a single tenant if you want to use the multiple tenant then you can go ahead with that as well so single tenant i'm going to show it with a single tenant okay and you can simply click here okay you can simply click here register so 
uh, here you can see that the create application successful okay so this message you can see here once it is successfully cre uh, created uh, you can see that uh, particular information over here okay you can see it here so now what we have to do is what this is very important we have to click authentication in the left side so you can see here you have authentication and we will also uh, see one more option here so let us uh, let me click this authentication okay so i'm going to click this authentication once you click authentication so you have to what you have to add a platform see understand initially i have created a uh, app so this is app permission i have initiated and then for that i have to provide the permission for business central okay so for that you have to just add add a platform so once if you click add a platform so what i have done is what add platform once if you click add pat platform you can see a web option okay because i'm going to just try it with the web application other than that you have mobile application android desktop everything is there okay so let me just click on this mobile uh, sorry web application so once if you click the web application it will ask you redirect uri so what is uri uri means uniform resource identifier okay so this is uh, we can uh, a redirect uri okay or reply url uniform resource locator or uniform resource indicator is the location where the authorization server sends the user once the app has been successfully authorized and granted okay so where it has to redirect so if you want to know more about this you can click here docs or else you can even know about the redirect uri here so this is what the redirect uri uh, for business central because i'm just going to test with the business central itself so this is what the uri for that so once if you give that you should get this tick symbol okay if it is showing cross if it is not the correct uri then it will show a cross symbol so this is correct so it is showing a, a tick symbol okay so once this is correct then you can just go down and click configure okay once it is correct you can just scroll down you don't want to give any other uh, uh, thing here just to give the ad platform web and then you can just uh, simply uh, give the URL here and then click configure okay so once if you give configure you can see the update application authentication successful information on the right side on the top right okay once it is uh, done okay so what we have done is we have connected with the web now we have to give the uh, permission to the application okay that is a business central application so we have to go to the api permission so okay so you can select here api permission from the left okay so i'm going to select api permission here so once you select api permission you can see an option called add permission okay you can see an option called add permission and if you click on the add permission it will show you various apis that is you have various microsoft api uh, this is api microsoft api you can see here three tabs this is microsoft api api my organization uses and my apis whatever api you have created that will be available here so anyhow we are going to connect with business central so it is available under microsoft api so you can just to scroll down to see what are all the various apis which are uh, available other than this okay just scroll down you can see various apis over here which is uh, which is provided to us by microsoft okay so but uh, now i wanted to connect it with business central 365 uh, sorry dynamics 365 business central so i wanted to click this okay once you click this it will ask you what are the permissions which you wanted to provide so the first one is what the delegated permission so your application need to access api in the signed in user and the application permission okay so now let me click the delegation permission and you have two options here one is user uh, impersonation and financial rewrite all so you can select these two things and click add permission okay once you click add permission so you can see successfully saved the permission uh, for that particular per person 
okay and then again you can give add permission so once again if you give add permission it will ask you for which api you wanted to give the permission give again you have to give dynamics 365 and then you have to select application permission okay and what are all the application permission you wanted to give so you wanted to give for uh, uh, api okay automation so all these things okay a app access admin center read write so all these things you have you can give and click add permission so you can see all these things are coming up but you can see that not granted for sharepoint okay so this if you wanted to give this permission as well then you have to select this grant admin consent for sharepoint okay so let me click here so you have to give grant admin consent for uh, sharepoint so here it will ask you grant admin consent confirmation so do you want to uh, grant consent for the requested permission for all just click s so you can see on the top right corner you can see that grant consent uh, successful so the grant consent was successful and after it is granted then you can see the complete uh, status that it is granted okay so now we can go and create a certificates and secrets for that okay i i hope you all uh, you can understand what we have did for initially we have created an app okay we have registered an app and then i have went to the authentication and then i am giving a permission to the particular app that is an api permission to the particular app and finally i wanted to give the certificates and secrets that is i have to create a secret key for that okay because this is an oauth open authentication which means that it is not secured but which means that it is properly authenticated so for that you have to give the proper certificates and uh, secrets okay so click once if you click here you have to give this new client secret okay for which client you're going to register you can give new client secret so once if you give new client secret it will ask you description okay i am going to give gms demo okay uh, gms test demo so I'm going to give GMS test demo and here uh, it will ask you the expiry date, okay, client expiry date. So this is the important one which we have to think about it. If you wanted to give the client uh, expiry date for three months, then it is fine. But the recommended is what six months, only six months. And if you wanted to make it custom, so if you wanted to give your own time, then you can give. As of now, I'm just going to going with the recommended setting that is 180 days, six months. Okay, I can click here recommend and then click add so once you click add you can see that up successfully updated information on the top right so once it is given once it is there so you can see the value and the secret id so if you click on this okay you can see the value and the client id okay so if you just uh, you can just copy this copy this value and you can paste it somewhere in the notepad okay so value i will be pasting this because for uh, ease of use so even if you wanted to see this i can also show you how to see this secret id is also here okay value and secret id if you just go to the overview you can see the complete information over here so what is the application client id what is the object id what is the directory tenant and uh, client credentials you can see that one secret credentials is there redirect uh, uh, everything is there right redirect uri application so you can see all the information all the details whatever we have added here so this is what very important to us first one is the client id that is application id is important to us that is the client id okay and client id this is important and then secret value that is a secret id is also important that we have already copied it that is the secret value okay secret uh, uh, certificates and secrets that is uh, here you can see this is important okay this is um value okay so this is important and then you can also see that the directory id so here you can see the directly tenant id this is also important okay 
fine so these three are very very important so now let us go and uh, as of now we have uh, what we did is what in the azure portal we have set up the uh, permission for business central now we have to go to the business central and go and search for azure active directory so azure once you give Azure, it will show you Azure Active Directory application. So click here. So it will show you a client ID which is already created. You can click here new. Okay. So once if you click here, it will ask you for the client ID. Okay. You can see here what is the client ID. This is what. Okay. This is the client ID we have to give. So you can copy this client ID and paste it here okay and the description whatever the description we have given so you can go and search here like what is the description gms test demo so you can give here the gms to test demo and the state you can change it to enabled okay and then once if you s do you want to continue you can just give s is the name GMS test demo will be created do you want to continue so it is asking for whether you wanted to uh, create this you can simply click S yes. okay so let us wait for this to be created yes it is created okay so now you can see that the GMS test demo is created and you can see the information over there so once if you go back you can see that the gms test demo is created once your gms test demo is created okay you have to grant uh, you have to uh, assign some permission to the aad applications okay so click here once if you click here you can scroll down okay once you can scroll once it is okay so once you scroll down you can see the user groups here so what are all the things you have to set the permission you can just go ahead for example if you go and click here you can see various options out of there like um yeah so what are the things which you wanted to give the permission uh d365 account so this is whether if you want this you can give the permission d365 administrator d365 so you have various option d365 backup okay d365 so whatever you want you know you can give the permission for that you can simply type the uh so i am just going to give finance d365 finance okay uh, so for that i am going to give the name read and write data okay so you can select here so it is showing like read and write finance data and it is showing the uh, name of that okay and then next if you wanted to add the 365 full access okay uh, this is what the user group like for what are all the groups you want the access to be given okay you can just assign that here and uh, you can see okay so t3 d365 e, uh, if you want something else to be given access then you can just select it okay so whatever you want you can simply select it and uh, it is saved okay it's already saved so again if you go and open your gms test demo you can see for what are all the groups the access has been uh, given but you cannot give the complete uh, set so user user permission permission set is also here they have assigned to it so whatever we have done is what we have created uh, we have created the azure directory app permission and also we have enabled it here with the um, client id okay now let us go and install postman so in postman.com you can find the postman tool i have already discussed about what is a postman tool and why do we need it so here you can see you have three download one is uh, for windows and second one is for apple it is a Mac and third one is for Linux. Okay, so you can click here if uh, my system is uh, Windows. So I'm just going to use Windows So Windows 64 bit. So once if you select this Windows 64 bit, it will ask you uh, what to uh, download. So, so it is installed. I'm going to open the folder here to so double click on it. Okay, so once it is installed, it will launch the user interface. Okay, that is a graphical user interface. So I can create a free account. Uh, if you wanted to skip and go to the app, you can directly 
go to the app as well okay so here in the collections okay so you can create the collection click create collection so you can see that uh, you can create any collections over here just to give the name for that i'm just going to give gms test okay and uh, um so once if you click a gms test and click add request okay so here you have to give the add request you will get this particular thing called get okay so we are going to get the data from business central right so this is what the complete url okay so you have to use api.businesscentraldynamics.com v2.0 environment okay now your question comes where do we, you get the environment and where do you get the type let me show you where to get the environment okay this is your business central rule center page so if you go there uh, you have a settings like uh, icon right on the uh, on the uh, top right here you can select the admin center select this admin center i'm just going little fast because already it is a big uh, video so that is why and here you can see various environment whatever you have so in which environment you are working so you can find this environment details even in your visual studio code you will be using that so i am using this bz india so i am just selecting this so here you can find your environment so what is your environment in the url you can see that this is your environment name 9 fe okay or else even on the top uh, here you can find that this is your environment name okay 9 fe -E. so this is what the, your environment name you have to take and copy that in this particular area and let me just put it in the get okay what we are going to try here is what we are going to check whether it is working properly uh, whether it can easily get the data okay that is what the thing here uh, so let me just give uh, uh, okay so let me just enter paste it okay let me just paste it here and let us see whether it can easily get the data so once if you click here uh, you have to do the next uh, step over here okay so we have to select the authorization so here you have the thing called authorization in that you have to go to the type okay click the type and you have an option called oauth 2.0 okay click that once if you click that you have an another option called uh, add authorization data so here you have to select request headers okay so you have two things request url and request headers you have to select request headers okay once you select request headers you can see that uh, here you have uh, uh, configure that is a current token and configure new token okay so you have to come to the configure uh, new token that is configure option that is configure new token here and then you can give the token name okay so what is my token name i can use the same token or uh, same thing which i have created here that is uh, okay i'll be using the same thing which is gms test demo okay so i'll be using gms test uh, this is for uh, easy and understanding okay gms test demo i am using this and what is the grant type you have to give so grant type is what the client credential so we have we have created the client right that is what the client which we have created in the show so you have to give the client uh, that is client details and access token url so what is this access token url you have to give your uh, 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 token url okay that is uh, your tenant id okay so i'll be using this tenant id here we can see here what is the tenant id i have mm, go here and on the overview you can see the tenant id okay i can copy this this is the tenant id so here uh, uh, client credentials we have to give the client credentials here and in the access token url okay so this is the access token url 
we have to use this token so here uh, what we have used is what this particular area is what the uh, access token url i'm going to use it but what you have to replace here is what your tenant id okay where you can get the tenant id from the Assure uh, overview. You can go and see here that here you have a tenant ID. Okay, you can copy this and use this here. And I'm going to use this complete uh, link. Okay, I will also uh, share about this particular concept in my blog, so you can even watch that. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the access token URL. Okay, you can see here this is the access token URL and the next one is what we have to give the client ID. Okay, so client ID you can go and see here uh, in the same thing you can see application ID and here they have mentioned about the client ID. Okay, so copy this client ID and paste the client ID here and the next one is client secret. So client secret is what the value okay it's not a secret id it's a value here so client secret you have to use the client secret and you have to tell what is the scope okay so scope is what you can use this url it's a default scope you can give the default scope here and send client credentials in body so once it is done you can get the new access so it will uh, uh, collect the access from there and it will give you the authentication process and your uh, access token is ready okay so now once you get the access token okay you can use this token okay use you can click here use token here okay the token this particular token based on the client id and every Thing, this token will be used in the get for this particular uh, URL okay once all these things are done you can click send okay what happens this request will be sent and uh, on the under under that you can see if the environment is granted you will be find that you can see the data okay environment does not as exist okay it is asking it is showing that that particular environment does not exist let us see what is the error so what i did uh, wrong is what uh, the name environment name you have to use the bc india okay sorry i have used the sandbox um so i'll just replace this to bc india okay, let me check bc india okay now let me try to send the request back uh, to that yes it got the data so it gets the complete data that is api business central and it is showing that the test is okay okay 200 the status it is showing 200k and it properly establishes the connection between that okay so this is how you can test this is get data okay we have simply get the data you can also try all these requests okay how all these things work but simply i'm just showing the get data okay so what a small thing which i uh, did is what in the type you have to use the name of the bc okay so here it is used a name i have used uh, uh, unknowingly i have used a sandbox okay the name of that so you can even copy this link completely and use it over there okay so what we did so far is what we have connected we have first created the app permission for bc uh, in uh, azure uh, azure directory and then we have uh, uh, created the uh, we have created a proper we have configured everything in the business central as well and finally we uh, uh, we have successfully connected the we have successfully established the api get request here okay so uh, in the next video i can also explain you what is a rest api and how we are going to use that okay so what are the important steps which you have to follow is what whenever you are trying to access in the postman so be clear that you have to configure all these things. These are all very, very important. Okay. So I'll uh, upload uh, all these things in a detailed uh, written manner in the blog as well. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.